Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary, here with the release notes for the 1.0 release. The message passing between nodes is becoming fully asynchronous. Rather than sometimes being synchronous and sometimes being asynchronous depending on the implementation of individual nodes. This will, in some cases, have an effect on the relative order of messages when flows branch. This change is an important step in the roadmap for the project, enabling features such as the pluggable message routing, a fully fledged flow debugger, as well as being able to build in timeouts into the nodes throughout a flow. Internally, nodes now have a new API they can use to tell the runtime when they have finished handling a particular message. This will help the runtime to track messages as they flow through the system. To go with this, we're introducing a new complete node that can be triggered when a given node finishes with any message. As part of this work, we're also changing the default behavior of function nodes when it comes to how they clone messages. Previously, they would have tried not to clone messages if it wasn't necessary. But with this release, they will now clone every message that is passed to the node.send function. If your flows depend on messages not being cloned, then you need to update your function node to ask the runtime not to clone them. More information about all three of these features, the async message passing, the new messaging API, and the cloning of messages, are all available in the blog. Link in the descriptions below. The editor has gained a number of new features in this release. We've reorganized the palette to give what we believe is a better order to the nodes we provide. The default categories are now common, containing the basic building block nodes, such as inject, debug, catch, status, and so on. The function section, which contains the main function nodes, along with switch, change, template, and so on. The in and out categories have now been replaced by this new network category that pulls together nodes of a common type. So, for example, the HTTP in and response nodes now sit next to each other in the palette, rather than being in different categories. The sequence category is for nodes relating to message sequences, split, join, batch, and so on. And the parser category contains the nodes for working with particular formats, CSV, HTML, etc. In the previous release, we added the ability for subfo template nodes to define a set of environment variables that can be provided within individual subflow instances. With this release, we're providing the ability to customize the UI that individual instances display to the end user for setting those environment variables. For example, you might want to have a Boolean flag within a subflow. Now, rather than requiring the user to type in true or false in a text field, the subflow instance can present a checkbox, making it far easier to work with. And you can also customize the color of individual subflow nodes, making them feel like regular nodes in your palette. A lot of the things you can do in the editor are defined as actions, and those actions have keyboard shortcuts that you can define under the settings panel. To help discover what actions are available, there is the new action list that you can open by hitting the Control shift p keyboard shortcut, or selecting the View Action List from the menu. This lists all of the actions, and using your keyboard, you can scroll through and select an action to perform. Speaking of keyboard shortcuts, we've introduced some new defaults. You could already use Control Z to undo actions in the editor. You can now use Control Y to redo something you previously undid. Control Alt L can be used to clear the debug sidebar of its messages, and Control D can be used to deploy your current flows. To make it easier to edit JSON text within the change node, for example, we've introduced a new visual JSON editor where you can click around to construct the JSON document in the structure you want. We've also introduced some new wiring tricks. For example, you can control click on a wire and it opens up the quick add dialog, and when you select a node, that node will be spliced into the wire you had clicked on. And the search dialog has been updated, so it's not limited just to the first 25 results of your search. The import and export dialogs have been overhauled to give a combined experience whether you're working with the clipboard, your library, or the examples that nodes provide. The context sidebar can now be configured to auto-refresh its contents whenever you change a selection in the editor, 
so you don't have to manually refresh whenever you switch tabs. Under the covers of the editor, one of the largest changes we've made is a complete overhaul to the CSS structure. So if you've created custom themes for the editor, you'll need to pay particular attention to this. And we've also updated to the latest major versions of the underlying libraries the editor uses. But we've also taken this opportunity to get rid of Bootstrap, which we no longer use anywhere within the editor. There have been a number of minor features throughout the nodes and the palette, and it's worth reading the release notes to see the full details of those. We've also taken this opportunity to remove some of the core nodes from the default palette. These are the Twitter node, email, sentiment, feed parser, and the Raspberry Pi GPIO nodes. They can all be reinstalled via the palette manager as they're all published as their own node modules. And if you're using the prepackaged Raspberry Pi install, you'll find the GPIO nodes have already been reinstalled for you. We've completely overhauled the Node-RED Docker images we produce, so they're multi-architecture and a much more flexible install. Take a look at the documentation to see what's updated, as we've also changed the tags we publish. The Node-RED Flow library has had a large update as well. So now, rather than just listing nodes and flows, we've introduced this new idea of a collection. That allows you to create a collection of interesting nodes and flows, however you see fit. For example, we've created a collection of extra nodes you can install for Node-RED Dashboard. You can use collections to create tutorials and other interesting ways to curate the content in the flow library. As you can imagine, this is a major milestone for the project. We've been talking about 1.0 and our roadmap for a long time, so it's really pleasing to get to this point. A big thank you to everyone who's contributed in the code, the documentation, who've been trying out the betas over the last couple of months and providing great feedback in the forum. We think this release gives us a really great footing for an exciting roadmap taking us all the way forward in the future. Do get in touch if you have any comments and enjoy Node-RED 1.0.